Ted, welcome back. It's good to have you. We have political news to get to, but before we get to that, let's start with the latest on the Washington Bridge. The head of the Federal Highway Administration was recently in town touring the westbound part of the bridge. If ever there was a sign the federal government is taking this seriously, really that was it. Clearly, and I think uh, Rhode Island officials want these federal officials to come up, see the situation, and emphasize to them how important this is to Rhode Island as well as Massachusetts. I know U.S. Senator Jack Reed is also trying to get uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to come up as well. And of course, behind all this is the hope that a lot of federal money will follow them to rebuild the bridge or repair it or whatever it is. Right. And the head of the Federal Highway Administration had to deliver news that really no one wanted to hear, which is, look, if we do have to repair this bridge, we don't know. We're talking about a one to two year timetable. Yeah. And I think that's sort of what we're all starting to accept is where this seems to be going. Again, no one's saying it officially, but he acknowledged himself that he came and made this visit because it's transitioned from a repair to potentially a full rebuild. So what it feels like to me right now is the administration is kind of buying some time to come up with not just the announcement about the bridge's fate, but a plan for how to replace right. it. We'll be following that. So before we get to local elections, I know a guy who's already thinking about what's happening locally, but two years from now, well, right? It's never too soon. <laughs> so you've been looking at recent cam campaign finance reports. What is that telling you about how the governor's race is shaping up in two years? Well, I found it very interesting. Helena Folks, um, the former CVS, CVS executive who, of course, had a near miss run against Dan McKee in the Democratic primary for governor in 2022, she raised $114,000 during the fall quarter, almost as much as the governor who raised $140,000. Clearly, she is signaling to everyone she is ready for a rematch against McKee. She's very serious about running for governor again, especially when she came so close last time. We're also, of course, watching Peter Narona to see what he does. A lot of time left, but the the piece is already starting to move. And one of the big races will be the race for mayor in Cranston. We have State Representative Barbara Ann Fenton Fung, who's challenging the Republican mayor, Ken Hopkins. Of course, she is the wife of former Cranston mayor, um, Alan Fung. They've had an interesting exchange recently. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, first, we have to remember, um, Michelle, that the, they were allies just four years ago. The Fungs endorsed Hopkins to succeed uh, Alan Fung as mayor of Cranston. Now they're already kind of going hammer and tongs in February for a primary that's not till September. And there were some great quotes that I just have to read because I think it gives people a flavor of that race. Fenton Fung at her kickoff quoted the Barbie movie and said, quote, Ken, this Barbie has considered all of her options. I have made my choice and it's time for a change. Hopkins later in the week shot back at her. Barbara Ann, you are not in Middletown anymore. This is the big city. The big city is Cranston. Cranston. Someone will get that on a t-shirt or a mug. <laughs> and Mayor Hopkins will also face a Democratic challenger. Yes, City Councilor Robert Ferry, who actually was a Republican until a few years ago. He switch parties. He's seeking the Democratic nomination for mayor. So whichever of those Republicans comes out of the primary should have a credible challenger in November, too. Okay, let's turn to the mayoral race in Woonsocket, where we have um, City Council President John Ward announced he's running for mayor, as well as State Representative Robert Phillips. Of course, that seat was vacated by Lisa Baldelli Hunt when she resigned abruptly amid a land dispute and, and her associations with a former business associate. What are you watching there? Well, Woonsocket hasn't had an open race for mayor in a long time, and obviously there's a lot of uh, you know, hubbub in city politics after Baldelli Hunt's unexpected resignation. There's also a little full circle here because John Ward um, was close politically to Leo Fontaine, the mayor who was ousted by Lisa Baldelli Hunt. So uh, politics is a, is a small world in Rhode Island. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ted. A lot to keep an eye on. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle.